Welcome to the Data Protection Advisor Web Console demonstration. This demonstration will cover the GPA management interface. In this demo, we'll be covering the GPA Web Console, so let's get started. First, we need to log into the Web Console. Uh, we need to enter the username and password here. In this case, I'm going to be using the administrator account, so we have full access to the to the console. So this is the web console. Um, here at the left we can see the primary navigation. Those are the main functions of the web console. For for each uh, primary function we have a number of uh, different secondary options here. We have the same options at the top of the screen here uh, in the form of tabs. And at the bottom of the screen, we can see the alert bar. So let's start with the dashboard. Dashboard provides you high level information of your environment. Um, it displays a number of different uh, small windows that we call viewlets, as you can see here. GPA comes with a number of uh, default uh, dashboards, and each, each dashboard shows a uh, different viewlets. For example, let's take a look at the summary dashboard. Uh, we see here uh, other stars by group, backup key, performance indicators, and things like that. We can also create our own dashboard or change the existing dashboards. If you go to add dashboard, for example, you can change the scope, the time period, schedule for any given uh, viewlet or dashboard. I'm going, to, I'm going to cancel here. We also have a dashboard actions uh, menu where, where you can save a dashboard, email it, or publish a dashboard. And again, you can also create your own custom dashboard. So you're going to see that in a minute. Uh, next, we're going to cover the advisor uh, function. Um, here we have alerts and replication analysis. So Let's take a look at uh, alerts first. Uh, as you can see here, we have a list of all the alerts in the system. Uh, usually, um, alerts are created by the analysis engine. Here we see the description, uh, in some cases, resolution for the alerts. As part of alerts management, you can also acknowledge, close, or add notes to uh, it alert. Next. Let's take a look on replication analysis. Uh, here at the right, you can see a list of uh, replication gaps in your environment. Um, and at the left, you see a tree uh, displaying all the objects in your environment that are using replication. Uh, the green marks means replication is OK. Um, this exclamation mark means uh, you have a non-critical uh, alert. For example, a database not in backup mode or something like that. And red marks means critical uh, gaps. For example, replication is not happening for some reason. Next, let's take a look at the reports function. So here we have a number of different uh, options. First one is, is to run a report. Basically running a report is a three-step process. We start by selecting scope of the report, that means an object or a group. Um, then we must select the report template, that means which report we want to run. Um, we have a number of different categories here, as you can see. Let's, for example, select memory memory configuration. <clears throat> and finally, we select the time period. Uh, then we'll click Run, and here is our report. We can change the report format if you want. Um, this is not a good example, but anyways, let's try Line. Uh, line report. 
yeah as I said not a good example but anyways um, in you have the report actions menu where you can save report email publish uh, schedule report uh, compare reports add to our favorite menu etc next let's take a look at report jobs function here we can see a list of all the reports currently running or that were run recently um, here we have a list of schedule reports in this case we don't have any schedule report but it, we could create a, a schedule report here um, we we can create a description then we can select uh, one of our template reports or create a new report if you want select the scope is time period and most important part here is uh, the publish settings uh, we can specify how we want to have this CAD report uh, sent to us it could create a PDF file it could uh, uh, create a text file image file things like that we can just save that as, as a file or we can send the report by email for example you can select off that here and you, you can have more than one setting per uh, per scale report so for example I can save a report but I can also uh, can email the same report uh, next um, we we have a similar tab for dashboards when it we can schedule dashboards and as you can see here uh, some of the default dashboard they they're already scheduled uh, report templates we use this tab to create new reports so if I click new report here if I go to the report editor and then I can create a new report here I can I can use data sources and uh, operators to create a report and that's beyond the scope of this demonstration but anyways let me show you something quickly here so I, I just add a data source I connect to the to the report object here and then I can try to run this report just to see if it works um, so I'm selecting time period and let's see what happens so yeah it works shows a list of um, uh, backup um, client and we have also here a list of system reports system reports are the built-in reports that ships with uh, DPA I can also create a copy of a system report and modify that if I want uh, dashboard templates is similar I can create new dashboards um, and for that I use I can use report as as my components for creating new dashboards and I can add a number of different reports to a dashboard um, we have some system dashboards uh, those are the default dashboard that we have with TPA finally we have this report menus function I mean when when you created a new report if you want a user to be able to run a report that I create I need to add that to a report menu and then assign the menu to a user or a group of users and here's the here's the editor for the menu I mean I, I can create a number of uh, uh, items and associated a different report with each item um, I can give it a name uh, like I don't know first report second report something like that and then from the uh, menu item I can select a report or a dashboard uh, that I want to as associate with that option next let's take a look at, at policies uh, we have three different uh, policies with DPA analysis protection and chargeback so policies they are a collection of related settings and configuration that can be applied 
to an uh, object to determine the processing that will be carried out. The analysis policies, they define the alerting rules. So here for each policy, as you can see, we, we can have one or more rules and each rule is going to basically uh, monitor some aspect of your environment. For example, uh, if uh, there is uh, no storage space left or if a link is down or things like that. You can create your, your, own, your own policy for each policy you can uh, can give it a name and then you can associate a one or more rules as we just saw and we can create a action that means the the way that DPA is going to alert you it could send you a mail it could uh, send you a SNMP trap or run script or things like that So here we can see um, some of uh, the existing system rules. Um, we can also create our own rules. Uh, I'm not going to show here because it's uh, beyond the scope of this demonstration. And once you have created a, a policy, um, you should assign that policy to at least one object or a group of objects. Um, so for example here we have uh, backup servers and as you can see um, none of the groups here have an applied policy so let's apply one of our policies to to this group here so we only have a we, we have a single policy created but um, we can select that and apply to the EMC networker group. Next let's take a look at protection policies. Uh, protection policies they define the type of protection applied to an object for service level agreement compliance reporting. So we have some uh, recover rules for, for each policy. It basically defines things like RPO, RTO, um, things like that. We have uh, some protection rules. Those defines the the backup schedules or backup windows that we can have in your environment. Um, so we have some uh, policies already create, created here, but you can create new a new policy if you want. So for example, we can define the recovery rules and the protection rules. So Here's a example of a protection rule. Let's create a, uh, I don't know, a name here, rule and type is going to be uh, backup. Then we can select the schedule. It basically, the schedule defines our backup window. So, so that makes sure that our backups um, they they occurring uh, within a backup window. So. Uh, yellow is the allow time for backups um, in this example. And as analysis policies, once you have created the, your protection policy, you need to assign that to group or a group or a object. Uh, finally, chargeback policies. Um, chargeback policies they define the costs of storage and their protection operations so in this example we have backup costs um, storage costs things like that moving on to inventory here you can see a list of all uh, objects that uh, GPA is collecting data from and we can also um, add new or discover new um, objects from here in our environment. Next we take a look at the admin menu option. First we have the users tab. From here we can manage users. We, for example I can create a new user and assign a role um, or assign a menu to, to it. Uh, 
roles basically they define the access rights uh, for a group of users and uh, we, can also, we can also manage the external authentication using LDAP or Active Directory from here. The System tab, we have a number of different functions here. For example, we can run the Discover Wizard to discover new objects in our environment, for example, a new switch or things like that. Um, we can configure some reporting settings, for example, if you want uh, service level agreement reporting, enable or not, things like that. We can configure uh, system settings, for example, um, logging logging settings for for each component of DPA. We can manage credentials from here. Credentials are used when collecting data from objects, uh, for example, a database or a switch or I, I need to have uh, connection rights to that object so I can create a credential for that. Um, I can manage, for example, uh, data collection that defines uh, what data should be collected and when. Um, so I can define also retention period for that data, uh, the credentials are required to collect that data and things like that. I can manage uh, DPA license from here. Um, and finally, I can manage schedules um, for things like uh, service life agreement and time periods when I'm running reports. I can create some custom time periods. And that concludes our demonstration.